the world is an uncertain place. Uh, there are problems in China. There are problems with uh, uh, some leadership uh, or some countries where leadership has taken a much more aggressive role in managing geopolitical situations. Uh, there is a problem uh, in terms of oil prices coming down and that attendant impact on countries. Uh, and there is technological disruption happening. How does this all dissolve or resolve into a country like India and what are the, the problems that we are facing today? I'm not sure it does resolve at the global level. Uh, certainly, each country will try and find its own solutions. But as I pointed out, most of these phenomena cross borders, and the authority of any government stops at its own borders. So that means that India, like anyone else, is going to be vulnerable to forces it can't control because these forces originate elsewhere. The impact of falling oil prices has actually helped India so far because it has enabled India to be able to boost up government revenues and meet our fiscal deficit targets. What would happen if things continue dropping in such a bad way that all the Indian expatriate workers in the Gulf are laid off? First of all, there is a problem of declining remittances. Yeah, we've already, seen, like we've Kerala, already seen that. Gujarat, yeah. Punjab, and so on. But also, how do you absorb the people who are coming back, their expectations, their frustrations, their demands? There, there could be serious problems there. Are you getting a sense of that from your constituency? It's still early days. It's still early days. I would say that um, there's certainly been a slowdown in new recruitments and relatively modest numbers of layoffs and people coming back. But it could get a lot so worse. So you're in, in your constituency, you're actually facing the, the, tail, the headwinds of global economic disruption, That's right. perhaps more than many other places. Absolutely. And you can see more of it. I mean, for example, we talked about the rise of technology and technological disruption. You know, when a phenomenon like Uber comes up, all the established taxi unions and auto rickshaw unions, which are, of course, very important to every politician in Kerala, are up in arms because they they see their uh, assured income going down. They find competition from people they consider to be illegitimate. Uh, how do governments cope with this sort of thing? Can you just push back the waves of technology like King Canute on the shore? Or are you going to say, sorry, guys, this is the new world. Welcome to it. And if you do, you lose votes from the taxi drivers and the rickshaw, auto rickshaw drivers. These are serious issues already arising in my constituency and I dare say in other metropolitan constituencies across the country. On the immediate issue of our own borders, clearly we need to have some sort of accommodation with both China and, and Pakistan to ensure that these borders do not become hotbeds of conflict. And that's apparently what we are in the process of trying to do. And I would like to see it carrying on in a, in a constructive direction. Relations with Bangladesh, for example, have been improved through a generous uh, giving of territory to Bangladesh to streamline the border situation there. Uh, but relations with Nepal have been unnecessarily and unfortunately tense. Can we find the right balance with the other neighbors? Uh, only time will tell, but these are important challenges facing the government. Right. So how do we better prepare ourselves for this new world that you've defined, which combines the risk of geopolitical uncertainty with non-state actors, with technology disruption, which some of it might be good, but some of it might be uh, problematic for particularly at the local level? Right. So the, the, the answer and is, are we first, really of all, geared for this? Yeah. first of all, we have to be aware. Uh, and, and just understanding the situation is part of the, the important challenge. Secondly, it seems to me we need is to... Is it more complex than ever before? It is. Okay. But the world has always been complex, but the complexities have multiplied exponentially in the last few years. And this generation of technological change mm -hmm. is a phenomenon that no one's seen before. It, it's, it's not just comparable to, but far greater than, for example, the impact of cheap air travel, which transforms so many things, or the creation of satellite television. These were all major breakthroughs and game changers. But what we're seeing with technology today exceeds any of that. Mm -hmm. Um, so my, my final point would be that it seems to me one of the ways in which we can help cope with this is by stepping up to the plate and taking more of global responsibility on our shoulders. We have tended actually to have taken less responsibility over the last few decades rather than more. In the 1950s, we were a global player. We punched above our weight in world affairs. Uh, Nehru was consulted on crises in Southeast Asia and, 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 and with China and so on where today uh, the Indian leadership is irrelevant even when it comes to the Middle East and the West Asia. Despite all uh, the visits and the despite, travel? Despite the history. So mm. it seems that we need to step up and be far more actively engaged in terms of our foreign policy. And equally, we have to play a role in the stewardship of the global commons. All of these things that cross borders. We have the resources, the technology, the skill, the, the, the ability to be influential on everything from cyberspace to outer space. 
Uh, we are one of the top handful of countries that has that capacity, but we are not being out there in a sufficiently uh, significant way. We, our voice is lost amongst one of the many developing country voices. That isn't good enough. And, and, and I think we need to do much more. And, and how could that be done? I mean, you have a prime minister who is surely going out there, being present, uh, seeming to have put a greater impact put on... The prime a lot of energy into diplomacy, but it seems to me to be sporadic, mm -hmm. country-centered and reactive. I'm yet to hear a global vision mm -hmm. of how India wants the world to be and what India is prepared to do to help shape that world. Mm -hmm. That's our next challenge. But would that be easy to do when, when you've got domestic no, Nothing situation? worth doing is easy to do. You have to make the effort, have the vision, articulate it, pay for it and step up to do it. Otherwise, you become a helpless victim of forces you can't control.